Hello everyone, uh, welcome to free crash course for computer exams held by Virat Hindustan Sangam in association with Manifest IS Bengaluru. This program is inspired by Dr. Subramaniam Swami and is convened by Ravi Shankar sir, state education convener for VHS Karnataka branch. So I am the chief mentor of your program, Dhanush Kumar. I have been mentoring competitive service aspirants for past five years and we are done with polity, history, economy and geography and negotiating the environmental part which is very very important part of the general studies section, you take any competitive exams for that matter, right? So yesterday, uh, I mean in the last class we were, so before that, uh, I'll tell you the where you can watch this program on the YouTube channel of Virat Hindustan Sangam, here is the link for the channel and also you can watch, uh, you can connect to us for free mentoring on our telegram channel VHS education forum for any information you need, right? So last class we were talking about the endangered species that is IUCN endangered species and IUCN endangered species and critically endangered species extinct species how the IUCN classification is done that we were talking about in the last class. Today we, will, we are going to discuss the Indian biodiversity. How, how diverse is Indian biodiversity? You know what is biodiversity? That is the variety of plants and animals that is there in India that we are going to discuss today. Right? So, yes. So when it comes to India, India is a mega diverse country. India itself is called a subcontinent. Why it India is called a subcontinent? Because it has got variety of climates, variety of plants, variety of animals and uh, different religions, different languages. So though it is not a continent, it is as good as a continent. So, so much of diversity is there from climate to population, from language to environment every type of diversity you will find it in India, right? So, uh, when it comes to India, India is a mega diverse country. The area of India in the world uh, uh, area is 2.4% of the area of the world is, had by, is held by India and India is the seventh largest country. You already know that. So, when it comes to the species, we have 7% of the world species. Now, suppose, let's say the world has a hundred species in together plants and animals India has got seven percent of the species and when it comes to population India has 18.6 percent of the world population so almost one in every five people is a Indian so there are if say they say there are five people in a gathering it is highly probable that one person is a Indian so that is the link 18.6 percent but if you carry out the census now it will be as good as 20 percent okay so when it comes to species richness so you know what is species richness that is the variety of species so india ranks seventh in mammal seventh rank in mammals what do you mean by mammals those who give birth to young ones and feed their young ones right so human is a mammal right so seventh in mammal ninth in birds India ranks 9th in bird and 5th in reptiles, 5th rank in reptiles. So, India has got a variety of a diversity. So, uh, when it comes to the diversity, India has, I uh, will tell you what are these things. Uh, India has two reams, reams, R-E-L-A-L-M-S, two reams. I am going to tell you what is a ream and five biomes. I am also going to tell you what is a biome and 10 biogeographic zone that I also will tell you and 25 biogeographic provinces. This is the vivid variety of diversity that we have. So when it comes to REAM, so what is a REAM Andre? So it is the largest region in an ecosystem. So uh, largest region in an ecosystem which has similar biota Andre, similar type of animal, similar type of Andre, similar Andre, not exactly similar. So, it is the largest region of the ecosystem where there is similar biota that is climate, that is temperature, that is your uh, plant variety, animal variety all have some similar characteristics. So, that is a ream. India has two type of reams. Uh, two reams. India has the first ream is 
Himalayan region. Himalayan region is the first stream. So, that region, entire region forms one, one kind of rim. And the second rim is the rest of the subcontinent. That is, leaving out the Himalayas, whatever is there, that forms the second type of rim. Right? So, this is about the rim. So, so, rim ge one more definition is, it is a continent or subcontinent with similar geography and flora and fauna. Andre, it might be as big as a continent or a subcontinent, but with similar geography should be similar and flora, plants and animals should be similar. That is the definition of a rim. So, rim, Andre, they are going to ask you what is a rim. So, you should remember, right? So, India has how many rims? Andre? Two rim. So, Himalayan uh, region belongs to Paleartic rim, Paleartic rim in uh, Himalayan region. P A L E A R T I C R rim. Ge, uh, India Himalayan region is going to belong to and rest of the subcontinent that is the peninsular India, Indo Ganga plains and the islands. All these things belong to Malayan rim. Where do you find Malaya? Where is Malayan Peninsula? Hmm? Your Malaysia, Singapore, that peninsula is the Malay, Malayan Peninsula, right? So, Malayan Rim, this rest of the subcontinent belongs to Malayan Rim. So, um, uh, means what? Andre, Himalaya, if you leave out the Himalaya, rest of the subcontinent, uh, climate, vegetation, flora and fauna is similar to what is found in the Malayan Peninsula or another, that uh, region, right? So, this is about the Rims. So, uh, how many reams are there? So, I told you India has got two reams. So, how many reams are there in the world? Idi world ali, yes to ream ide. So, totally uh, terrestrial ali. Andre, on the land there are eight biogeographic reams. This number is very, very important. Around the world there are eight biogeographic reams. Right? This might be asked in your exam. So, next we will talk about the biomes. So, I told you how many biomes India has. India has got five biomes. What is the definition of biome? So, biome and plants and animals in an area with certain climate pattern. And there are plants and animals in a separate in an area, but that area has got a separate climate pattern. Right? It has a distinct climate. It might be monsoon climate. It might be evergreen climate or a desert type of climate. That is a where the, that, that climate along with the plants and animals there constitutes a biome. Not also, so what happens in the biome? In the biome, plants, animals as well as soil undergo interaction. Andre? So, there is a climate. In that climate, there are plants and animals. Their soils, plant and vegetation, I mean, plant and animals are interacting. That constitutes one biome. India has got five biomes. What are the five biomes that India has? So, this is a biogeographic uh, region, which is a subdivision. So, five biomes, you should know it. One is tropical humid forest. Tropical means it is in the tropic region. What is tropic region? Below Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn in between. So, that is a tropic region. Tropical humid forest. That is the first biome. Second biome is deciduous forest. You know what is a deciduous forest. So, India has got the maximum. So, which is the largest soil in India? It is alluvial soil. Largest forest. It is the deciduous forest. So, deciduous forest forms one biome. And third biome is warm desert. Warm desert is going to form the third biome. Fourth biome is Coniferous forest that is going to form the fourth biome and the fifth biome is alpine meadows. Alpine and the cold region. So, these are the five biomes which you should know by heart. That is tropical humid forest, deciduous forest, warm desert, coniferous forest and alpine meadows. These you should know by heart. So, the next uh, we will talk about, uh, I told you there are 10 biogeographic zones in India. So, what is a biogeographic uh, uh, zone? So, a biogeographic zone uh, has a distinct plants and animals. And one zone, you are going to categorize a biogeographic zone not based on climate, but, a, but based on a separate type of plants and animals, distinct plants and animals. So, in biogeographic zone, you have phytogeography and zoogeography. That is, 
plant geography and animal geography so totally there are 10 bio geographic zone the first bio geographic zone is trans himalayas one second okay so first one is trans himalayas so this is the trans himalayas what does it belong to it it has the aksai chin region the pakistan occupied kashmir and the ladakh region ladakh cold desert region is the first uh, bio geographic zone that means what the plants and animals here are similar right that is the first thing second thing is the himalayas this is the second thing including the north eastern himalayas forms the second bio geographic zone third one is the desert this is the third bio geographic zone so fourth one is semi arid between uh, so this is the fourth one so between the aravallis and the deccan plateau aravallis i mean between the desert and deccan plateau which includes the aravalli hills where is aravalli range it is somewhere here in the rajasthan so that is the fourth bio geographic zone fifth one is your western ghats this is the fifth bio geographic zone sixth one is deccan peninsula that is this this forms the sixth bio geographic zone seventh one is your gangetic plain gang indo ganga plain that is the seventh bio geographic zone eighth one is your northeast india this forms the eighth bio geographic zone ninth one is your uh, coasts i mean no, ninth one is your islands so all these islands forms the uh, ninth bio geographic zone tenth one is the coast that is the whatever the 7500 km coastline is there that forms the 10th bio geographic zone these are the 10th bio geographic zone into which india is divided next you have the fourth type of classification that is bio geographic provinces bio geographic provinces that is these bio geographic so bio geography means bio bio means plant and animal that is life which is taken with the geography and the landscape is demarcated andre measurement or boundary akadu based on biology and geography that is the bio geographic zone which is further subdivided into 25 uh, provinces these are the 25 provinces right so bio geographic provinces and it is nothing but zone zones are further subdivided so it is a uh, uh, 25 uh, zones uh, provinces are there so it is done by one person two people called uh, rogers and panwar rogers and panwar uh, does this bio geographic province uh, demarcation name is not very important it was done in 1988 so based on what does the bio geographic provinces are marked see bio geographic zone zone is based on plant and animals whereas provinces is demarcated based on some more uh, some more indicators what are they altitude moisture topography and rainfall along with plants and animals altitude that is height moisture humidity content topography the landscape the terrain of the region or the relief of the region that one and rainfall based on which the 25 bio geographic provinces are marked so trans himalayas what i told that is divided into himalayan ladakh mountains tibetan plateau and sikkim region so three subdivisions himalayas divided into north west himalaya that is pakistan occupied kashmir west himalaya central himalayas and east himalayas then indian desert is divided into thar desert and kutch desert the, the semi arid desert is divided into punjab plains and gujarat rajputana uh, that these are the 25 things western ghats the malbar plains and western ghat mountains so first as soon from if you are traveling by ship uh, from arabian sea first you are going to encounter the malabar plains so this is called as what malabar in kerala govan coast in karnataka or karavali in karnataka as well as in the um, in maharashtra what is it called what coast konkan coast right konkan coast so what is the eastern coast of india called as 
Coromandel coast. This name you should be knowing. Right? Deccan Peninsula is divided into central islands. That is your Madhya Hills, Maikal Range, Vindhya and Satpura. Then Chota Nagpur Plateau. That is Jharkhand, that Chota Nagpur metal region. Right? Jharkhand, uh, Chhattisgarh, that Rajmahal Hills region. Then Eastern Highlands. That is the uh, Eastern Highlands. That is this Eastern Ghats. Then you have Central Plateau. That is your Karnataka Plateau, Telangana Plateau. Deccan South, that is Tamil Nadu, Kerala region, right? Ganga Plains, Upper Ganga and Lower Ganga, Upper Ganga, Middle or Till, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Lower Ganga from Bihar till West Bengal. Then Coast, West Coast, East Coast and Lakshadweep, Northeast India, the Brahmaputra Valley and the uh, Northeast Hills. What are the hills in uh, Northeast? I've told you the other day. Naga Hills, Lusha Hills. Right? Then, Garo, Kasi, Jaintia, all these hills, Namcha, Barwa, all these things, right? So, islands, Andaman and Nicobar. So, what is the channel that divides the Andaman and Nicobar? Uh, Lakshadweep, 8 or 9 degree, it is 8 degree, right? So, so the, sometimes they say 9 degree, but actually it is 8 degree channel, right? So, the, these are the uh, provinces, right? Biogeographic provinces. Next, we will to move towards the actual biodiversity of India. That is how biodiversity is classified. First, we will talk about the uh, animal diversity. So, animal kingdom, it is divided into what? Vertebrates and invertebrates. What is what are vertebrates? Which has backbone and spinal cord is the vertebrates. So, these are the most advanced beings, most advanced living beings are the vertebrates. Human beings are vertebrates or invertebrates? Vertebrates, right? So, they are very small percentage of the whole population, just 2%, but they are dominant. So, humans today dominate the world. They put all the animals into zoos and make fun of them, right? So, so, the, uh, when it comes to animal kingdom, vertebrates, you have fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. So, mammals are the most advanced in the um, vertebrate thing. Invertebrates, you have annelids, mollusks, anthropods, arachnids, echinoderms and protozoa. I am going to tell all, uh, all these things uh, step by step. So, you should know what are the things which belong to. This is highly probable in a, even in your constable exam. They are going to ask these questions because these are the favorite questions for the basic level examiners. UPSC won't bother all these things because they ask high level questions. So, fish. So, first we will talk about the fish. Fish is what? It is cold blooded. Through what does it respire? Gills. It does not respire through lungs. It has a gill. So, that it will be somewhere. So, if the fish. Uh, so, I am going to draw a bad diagram of fish. I am going to say it is a bad diagram which I know it is a bad. So, if let us say it, you assume fish like this. So, here somewhere you have gills like this. Right? So, that is the gills from which they are going to uh, respire. They respire dissolved oxygen in the water. 0.01% of oxygen. Fish have scales and fins. Scales, Andre? What do you mean by scale? On the, see, like this there will be there now. So, if let us say this is the body of the fish, you have skills, scales. So, fish chermyral and apas, scales. So, when you eat fish, that is what they remove first. So, scales on the fish and fins. So, fin, this is fins. Right? This, these are fins, this is the tail, tail of the fish. So, they lay eggs. Fish lay eggs, they do not give birth to lie, lie, uh, Babies, live babies. So, then you have amphibians. So, what is the basic definition of amphibian? Living on water and land. So, you have, they are cold-blooded. They are also cold-blooded. So, see why cold, see these cold-blooded animals, they have a speciality. What speciality? Andre? They can adjust their temperature to the surroundings. So, if they go in the... Um, Shade, dark place, their temperature, body temperature will reduce. If they come to the sunlight, the temperature will increase, right? 
so even the snake snake is cold blooded that also does the same thing so the amphibians has both lungs and gills on land they are going to breathe to lungs so in water they are going to breathe to gills right so they have a moist skin moist skin slippery kind of a skin so if you have if you have touched a frog you know how moist the skin is right so they have they also lay eggs and they have four legs right this is the basic uh, identification mark for the amphibians next is reptiles reptiles all your snakes lizards all these things right so snakes uh, i mean these reptiles they are cold blooded they are also cold blooded they have scales on their body they have they also have scales they have whereas See, amphibians has moist skin. Reptiles have dry skin. Their skin is dry. They also lay eggs. They key, uh, lay the eggs, and uh, they don't have ears. Amphibia, I mean, these reptiles don't have ears. So, inter instead of ears, what do they have? They have ear holes. So, snakes have holes in their body through which they perform the earing act. Right. So, they have ear holes. so uh, sometimes these reptiles just like lizards and all they have four legs or else they will be having no legs right this is the speciality of reptiles then birds birds are also called as aves a v e s aves so they are see birds are warm blooded they have very warm blood they have feather and wings pukka right so they also lay eggs they keep eggs so they have they also have just like the reptiles they have ear holes not ears ear holes right so they have two legs they also have two legs so next you have mammals so mammals they are warm blooded and they have hair or fur on their body humans even humans had hair and fur on their body right some people even today they have hair and fur their body so they give birth to young ones they give birth to young ones and they nurse their young ones with milk breast milk they are going to feed to the babies right so one speciality of mammals is they have lungs instead of gills humans have lungs that is mammals have lungs so this is all about the vertebrates the basic information the invertebrates so invertebrates you have the first so what in andre they don't have backbone and how much percentage of how much percentage of the uh, world has invertebrates andre it is 98% of the world has invertebrates vertebrates backbone only 2% invertebrates 98% they are not so evolved right so their body is fluid filled invertebrates body see instead of the hard skeleton bone skeleton they have a fluid filled skeleton they do have a skeleton but fluid filled they are like fluid filled uh, skeleton right water filled skeleton right so fluid filled hydrostatic skeleton and it is a water filled skeleton so these invertebrates has so the example is worm earthworm jellyfish all these things are the examples right so that is one type of skeleton they have or they have a hard outer shell outer shell and on the body they have outer shell just like tortoise they will be having one outer shell on their body example is insects insects and crustaceans crustaceans crab all these things right they have a hard outer shell right so first one is your annelids what are annelids see annelids their body is divided into segments it's best for me to show the diagram because these things you won't understand with uh, without a diagram
So it is just like a earthworm. Annelid body is the just like a earthworm. So these are the annelids, right? So looks very disgusting. So annelids, their body is divided into segments. See, their body is divided into multiple segments, right? So this is one thing, and they have well developed internal organs. So that is a stomach, lungs, all those things are well developed in these animals. So they are found everywhere. And they don't have limbs. Okay. They don't have limbs. So the example is earthworm. Earthworm and leeches. Leech. So leech you have, you will find in the guard sections. So leech which sucks the blood. What do they put for leech? Salt, no? If, there, if you put salt, it will fall off. Huh? Okay, I have seen in some movies. And roundworms. Even roundworms are annelids. So the next type of category of... Uh, Animals is mollusks. So these are mollusks, which has a outer shell, snail. Basunula antar lapazo. So snail. So they are they have soft skin. Uh, inside soft skin organ but outside they have a thick shell outer covering will be there right so uh, they are found both on land and water on land you have snail uh, and other animals whereas in the water water only what are the animals octopus octopus is a mollusk squid oyster these things you, people will eat I don't think you will eat so, oyster, squid, octopus, all these things are the belonging to the mollusk category. Next, we have echinoderms. Echinoderms are water living. So, they are already, always found in the, they are ocean living. See, these are very factual things. You should by heart this. There is no other way to memorize this. So they are ocean living, all your starfish, all these things. So these are the echinoderms. So echinoderms, what is the information? They have arms and spines radiate from the body. See, from the body, arms and spines are radiating, radiating outside, right? So uh, the examples are sea star, sea star and sea urchin and uh, sand dollar sea cucumber. Sand dollar, sea cucumber, all these are the examples of the what? Echinoderms. Next, you have protozoa. Protozoa are very microscopic organisms. They are not visible to naked eye. These are protozoa, right? Not visible to the naked eye. So, uh, so they are single cell organisms. They have single cell. So, they are very smallest, smallest type of organisms. They are microscopic. So, but they also carry out breathing. Breathing, they do breathing. And uh, they reproduce as well. The best example is your Amoeba, yeah? Amoeba, right? So, amoeba and flagellas, flagell flagellates, flagellates are the best example for what? Protozoa. Next, you have anthropods. What are anthropods? Okay, so anthropods, they have limbs with joints. 
So these are anthropods. So all these things. See, even butterflies. So crab is there. Some different animal is there. This is also there, right? The, so uh, this is also an anthropod, right? So they have limbs with joints. Even your spider is an anthropod. They have legs and joints. So how many knees does that, uh, that spider has? Istmandi rite one that spider get? They have eight legs. Eight into each leg has three knees. Three bends alva. Three or four? Three bends. So 24 knees. Huh? I am also curious. I think it is 32. I have read it somewhere. Knees and spider. They have 48 knees. Double of what we were uh, projecting. So, 8 legs with 6 joints on each. They have 6 joints on each. So, uh, spiders have got 48 knees. Right? Okay, so they, these anthropods have an exoskeleton that is outside skeleton which is hard. Just like the mollusk, they have hard exoskeleton. You have, uh, what are the varieties? You have crutaceans, insects and arachnids. So first we will look at what is crutaceans. Crut see, crutaceans, insects and arachnids. These are subcategories under anthropods, right? So it is lab, uh, this lobster and the crab, all these are the crutaceans. So crutaceans are ocean living, they live in the ocean and they have hard external shell. The example is crab and lobster. They are called crutaceans, right? Insects. The second category under anthropods is uh, uh, your uh, insects. Insects have insects also have a exoskeleton. That is, the skeleton lies outside, right? So they have three body parts. They have three body parts. And that body, body of the insects. That is your butterfly. The examples are butterfly bee dragonfly all these things right so they have three the body is divided into three parts head body and tail part right so it has got six legs six legs are there on insects butterfly has how many legs six sir six or four you have killed so many butterflies in your life and you don't know how many legs it has so they have uh, these insects have six legs and one antennae one antenna is there on their head, right? So, that is about the insects. Then you have arachnids. Arachnids, the best example is spiders and scorpions. Arachnids are spiders and scorpions. I need not show you spider and scorpion pictures, but yeah, these are arachnids. Arachnids, so these, these are the things which have got 48 knees, that is especially the spider. So it has got 8 legs, 8 into 6. Eight, so this one has got 8 legs. Okay. So, 8 into 6, ah, 8 into 6, 48 knees, right? So this arachnids they are spiders and scorpions but see the difference between insects and arachnids is they don't have antenna spider you don't find antenna and also insects their body is divided into three subsection here their body is divided into two subsection see subsection one subsection two subsection one and two right two parts right and uh, they have four pairs of legs four pairs of legs they have. 
So this is all about the arachnids, which, which is the anthropod category. So this is all about the animal diversity. So this basic information is very, very, very important for you. Next, we will look at the floral diversity. Floral diversity, right? So when it comes, that is plants. So when it comes to floral diversity, India ranks 10th in the world. 10th in the entire world and 4th in Asia, 4th rank in Asia and Flora India has got 11% of world diversity, 11% of the world's diversity. So, uh, here the plant kingdom is divided into two categories. First category is cells and tissues are not highly organized, they are like disorganized type. Right? The second part is cells and tissues are organized into functional structures. And then there is proper organization. Cells have cell wall, all these things. Proper cells are there. They are, and also they are organized into tissues. That is the uh, second subsection. In the, un see, unorganized is lower level of plants. Organized is higher level of plants. So, in this you have first category. Algae, algae which contains chlorophyll, fungi, fungi and bacteria. So out of algae, fungi and bacteria which are unorganized, only algae has chlorophyll. What does it mean? It produces its own food. Whereas fungi and bacteria, they don't produce their own food because they do not have chlorophyll. They depend on other things, other animals to produce their food. Right, so algae, algae has chlorophyll. They have, they are green, non-differentiated plants. They are green in color majorly, and they are non-differentiated plants. What do you mean by non-differentiated plant? See, non-differentiated plant, Andre, you cannot uh, show which is the root, which is the stem, which is the leaf, which is the fruit. Everything is mixed. There is no differentiation in the body of the plant. So, suppose you take a mango tree. You can show which is the stem, which is the branch, which is the leaf, which is the fruit, which is the flower, which is the root, right? Which is the shoot. All those things you can show, but algae you cannot show. So, I am going to show you the image of algae because unless I show the image, these things will not sink into your brain. I think I have shown it already in under algae bloom, algal bloom, I will show it again. So, this is about the algae. See, these are the algae, spachita ranapa, as simple as that. See, this is the algae. Where did it go? Yeah. So, you know, right, in the hill stations and all, green type, pachi type, that is the algae. They can uh, have their own food, they can produce their own food. Right? So, this is about the algae. So, there you will find it in the uh, water regions and moist area. Very moist area you are going to find it. So, uh, with respect to algae, you should know this fact that fresh water you will find only green algae and blue algae. Fresh water in that region you are going to find two colors, green and blue color. Whereas, marine salt water you will find red and brown color, red and brown color, this is the difference which is very very important. If you don't write down, it's your loss, right? So, these are autotropic plants, autotropic and they produce their own food. Next is fungi. So, these informations you should keep writing, I need not repeat it again and again. So, fungi, they are not green, they are not green in color, they are non-differentiated. They are also non-differentiated. See, fungi image should I show, I think, in fungi image you will feel disgusted looking at it. But being, studying science, you should be open. If it is bad, I will close it. Yeah, not so bad. 
so mushroom mushroom is a fungi do you know that mushroom is a fungi so mushroom they are non green see none of them are green in color and they are non differentiated andre you cannot differentiate the body the root leaves fruit all those things just like the algae and they do not have chlorophyll and uh, oh, the speciality of these uh, fungi is they grow on dead and decaying organic matter on dead organisms they do dead animals right on that they are going to grow so they are saprophytes saprophytes and parasites means what they derive their nutrition from the dead organic material dead animals are plants from that they are going to derive the nutrition right so the examples is mushroom mushroom is the best example see largest uh, category of fungi in india is found in the largest population of fungi is found in the western ghats in our own western ghats we are going to find it the next category is bacteria should i show you the image of bacteria you will be knowing bacteria so bacteria they do not have chlorophyll they also do not have chlorophyll they are microorganisms so they ha they have a saprophytic or parasitic existence so saprophytic or parasitic means what they depend on other animals or plants to have their food so uh, so they are pathogenic pathogenic andre they cause harm right so suppose you are having diarrhea right or vomiting so some bacterial infection might be there right so uh, some uh, bacteria might have caused food poison right because they depend on the host or the animals for their food right so some bacteria are soil born that is born out of the soil so these bacteria are useful in industry some bacteria yeast and all they may you make use in making bread right some bacteria are very useful but not all bacteria right so this is the third category the fourth category is lichens not chickens lichen so these are lichens ferns and all those things so do i have a better image so these are lichens so they are found growing on the wood okay so this is the lichen so oh, let us look into some information of lichens so lichens are combination of alga and fungus andre it see what do you mean lichen andre it includes both fungus and algae algae produces the food and that food is consumed by the fungi right it is a symbiotic relationship andre mutual existence you give me food i'll give you water right fungi absorbs the fungus absorbs water and supplies water to the algae right so that is the speciality of lichens so they are mutual benefit mutual benefit of what algae and fungus algae and fungus so they are grayish green plants almost gray in color they are grayish green color plants right so where do you find this uh, lichens you will find it growing on the root, uh, trees tree trunks trunks or rocks also you will find it on the rocks so this uh, mutual beneficial relationship of the fungus as well as the algae it is called as symbiosis symbiotic relationship right where do you find this uh, lichens you will find it in the wetlands right where there is lot of water so but one thing is please remember you don't find lichens in the ground water lichens are not found in the ground water this fact so they are they are going to give you a question lichens are found in this ecosystem so first is first they will give desert ecosystem second 
ग्राउंड वाटर इकोसिस्टम थर्ड वेटलैंड इकोसिस्टम फोर्थ ट्रॉपिकल रेन फॉरेस्ट सो यू कैन इजीली रूल आउट डेजर्ट बट यू विल बी स्टक विथवीन ग्राउंड वाटर ट्रॉपिकल रेन फॉरेस्ट एंड वेटलैंड सो द क्लोजेस्ट ऑप्शन इज रेन फॉरेस्ट एंड वेटलैंड एंड यू शुड मार्क वेटलैंड इट इज एज गुड एज एस्किंग वेर इट वेर इज विराट हिंदुस्तान संगम इट इज इन इंडिया इट इज इन तमिलनाडु इट इज इन चेन्नई सो ऑल ऑफ देम आर करेक्ट सो दट दट सो द क्लोज द ऑप्शन आर बट यू शुड हिट अप ऑन द वेरी स्पेसिफिक ऑप्शन राइट सो नेक्स्ट we will talk about bryophytes bryophytes is the next type of organism bryophytes next type of plant organism in the plant kingdom so what are bio bryophytes certain basic information about these species is they are also plants but they are differentiated see these are bryophytes so i think the ferns ferns are also bryophytes so see these are bryophytes so bryophytes yeah they not the ferns but mosses moss so moss i have seen moss see this is moss this is moss all the this is moss this is moss this is also moss so it is similar to algae here sometimes looks similar but it is different but see here see algaeally there is no differentiation between the body parts whereas bryophytes there is a differentiation you can differentiate between the stems and leaves see leaves is different stem is different you can differentiate but in bryophytes you are not going to find the roots roots sigala nem kaili right you don't find the roots so where do you find the bryophytes just like the uh, algae you will find it in the moist areas moist areas you are going to find it the best example is liverworts and mosses liverworts and mosses so they are the second largest plants on the earth so they are second largest still we don't know what is it you should know bryophytes the best example is liverworts and mosses look as many images and as possible and suck the images into your brain so that you don't forget it in the future right these are the bryophytes right so next we will talk about uh, pteridophytes it's it's it begins with p p t e r i uh, t o p h i t p h y t e s but it is called as pteridophytes pterido phytes p h e p t e r i d o p h y t e s terido phytes so the ferns ferns are the best example so these are the terido phytes see these are ferns bryophytes are not ferns terido phytes are ferns so they have a well differentiated body andre stem leaves roots all these things you can differentiate and they have vascular bundles what do you mean by vascular bundles how can you relate that with the human body what is vascular system even we have vascular system yaar what is that ha huh? your veins arteries and veins so they transport everything alwa so there that is a vascular system there is a proper transportation system so in the plants the xylem and the phloem what does xylem do xylem sucks water and nutrients from the soil and transports it to various parts of the plant phloem what does it do food from the various parts of the plant to the i mean from the leaves to the various parts of the water leaves called leaves are food factories food factories of the plants i wish humans also manufactured their own food okay so but thankfully no because we couldn't have tasted variety of food items delicious foods so uh, this pteridophytes they have vascular bundles they are terrestrial plants these pteridophytes you won't find it in the aquatic ecosystem only and land you are going to find it 
So, you are going to find the peridopites is also on the moist places. Three things I told you in moist places. One is bryophytes, algae, peridopites. These three things. So, you will find these all places on the earth or on the land. So, the ferns are the best example. You are going to find this in India in the Western Ghats and Himalayan region. Right? Clear? Okay. So, next is gymnosperms gymnosperms so these are gymnosperms See, what do you mean by gymnosum? See, these are all the seeds, various types of seeds. Those seed, yeah, there is no cover, fruit cover. Agrala. So, the, the seeds are open. How do you remember this? Is, eh? I had a shortcut, very funny shortcut, I will tell you. I think it will be useful for you also. See, gymnosperms word, there is a word gym. So, what do they do in gym? They show the body, right? So, these uh, plants are also showing their seeds. So, seeds are not covered by the fruit. Mango, it is an angiosperm. Because the seed is covered by the fruit. See, these are, since they go to gym, they want to project their seeds, body, right? So, these are gymnosperms. So, they are naked seed plants. Their seeds are naked, right? So, they have simple flowers, very simple flowers they are going to produce. And the it is also non-differentiated, Andre. You cannot differentiate the flowers, the uh, flower, the uh, petal, the, uh, the stigma, ovules, ovary, all those things. You cannot differentiate, right? In the gymnosperms, right? But they don't produce any fruits. Gymno fru gymnosperms don't produce fruits, but they produce flowers, right? So, the ovules, ovules from where the seeds are produced, that is present here. Uh, not only that, there is ovary, style, stigma, all those things are there, but they are non differentiated. And you cannot differentiate, which is the separate things. Just like the uh, algae, where you cannot differentiate the roots, uh, stem, leaves, all those things. Here also you cannot differentiate. So, what are the different plants you have? Cycus, Cycus, Pinus and uh, Cycus and Pinus. So, the best example is your pine tree. Pine is the largest category of gymnosperms on earth. So, the next category is Angiosperms. Angiosperms. I am going to show you what is a Angiosperm. So, all your mango tree, guava tree, pineapple tree, Angiosperms, watermelon, everything. Does watermelon grow on a tree or on a creeper? So, all these are angiosperms. Mainly they have flowers. So, blessed is, so since school we are seeing the same diagram. Right? Hibiscus. I don't know how many hibiscus flowers I have killed, frustrated, after frustrated with biology. Biology was not my cup of tea. Okay, so angiosperms, they are close seeded, just like your mango, it is close seeded. They are well developed plants, well developed, and there can be differentiation. You can differentiate the roots, leaves. Petals, stem, ovule, stigma, all those things you cannot be, you can differentiate. So, they have flowers, you, they have flowers, they have ovary, stigma, uh, style and all those things. I'm, the classic example is this. Where is that image? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, this is the petal of a hibiscus, uh, this is ovary where the seeds are produced, this is style, 
style of the and this is stigma the topmost thing so this entire thing ovary style and stigma s o s is the keyword s o s right these three things are together called as pistil pistil right so this topmost grains are anther this is a filament this is a petal so anther and filament both these things together called as stamen stamen right so this is a sepal the leaf is a sepal and this is a receptacle pedicle all these things see this ovule ovule and see there is ovary in within the ovary there is ovule right so this is about the angio sperm so ovary ovary are see this ovary they have fruits they give the fruits whereas ovules ovules only there will be seeds ovaries become the fruits ovules become the seeds this differentiation is very very important ovary fruits ovules seeds right from the seeds new fruits will emerge so india has 7% of the world's flowering plants 7% right so this is all about the the entire plant diversity i have finished plant diversity is done so here uh, these three are uh, unorganized when it comes to organized you have non vascular tissues and vascular tissues so non vascular and there there is no xylem phloem that is your bryophytes i to showed you what is bryophyte right and liver warts mosses all those things then when it comes to vascular tissues one is dispersed by spores spores are the holes right sperido pteridophytes that is your fern see illi namge ellu lichen anta one category illa why why there is no lichen category though i spoke about it use your common sense yeah lichen is a mix of algae and fungi alva so there is no separate category for that right dispersed dispersed by seeds what do you mean by dispersal dispersal andre from one plant another plant growing that seed dispersal right in this it is seeds are not enclosed it is gymnosperms example is conifers and your pine second seeds are enclosed it is your angiosperms or flowering plant so this is the entire a plant diversity very very important yaar yeah, animal and plant diversity definitely one question especially so when it comes to basic level exams that is your constable exam fda sda stino all these exams these are the uh, things which they are very interested about factual information but higher up you go to kp ks not even ks uh, you go up to upsc level so there there is very analytical they don't ask factual right so uh, this is all about the diversity then crop genetic diversity so uh, certain facts i am going to give you uh, so crop gen genetic diversity that is agricultural diversity and in agricultural diversity india is seventh rank seventh rank india has that is agricultural diversity uh, that is different type of crops that are grown so you have national gene bank so the same question last class i am going to ask you today also where is international seed bank norway which is the place svalbard okay so the likewise we have national gene bank so where is this national gene bank it is at national bureau of plant genetic resources national bureau of plant genetic resources i'm going to tell you where is this so can you so that you can relate it with svalbard so national bureau of plant genetic resources most probably it is one second it is in new delhi new delhi national bureau of uh, plant genetic resources which has got various crop seeds and everything so next is livestock generic diversity genetic diversity what is livestock what is livestock are yaar what is animal husbandry 
पशु सागाणी के स्टट इट सेल्फ इज लाइफ स्टॉक यार इफ यू आर रेरिंग सम सम शीप सम गोट्स डक्स रैबिट्स फिश चिकन दट इज लाइफ स्टॉक राइट दट ऑल्सो कम्स अंडर द एनिमल दिस अग्रीकल्चर कैटेगरी राइट सो यू हैव नैशनल अग्रीकल्चर मिनिस्ट्री राइट सो इट इज डज इट फोकस ऑन ओनली ऑन अग्रीकल्चर हम्म so the ministry in india is uh, ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare what is the ministry with respect to livestock so i think we have a separate ministry or does it come under the so it comes under the agriculture ministry itself but uh, Uh, there is a separate department called ministry has departments the department is department of animal husbandry and dairy animal husbandry doesn't mean you find husbands to the animal so it is pashu sagani ke so animal yeah that was a bad joke by the way animal husbandry and dairying right so livestock ali what is the facts so we have in the world highest number of buffaloes are there in india we rank first in buffaloes yeah all these uh, political circles you have lot of buffaloes yeah don't tell this outside so highest number of buffaloes uh, first category yeah it's being recorded i apologize as usual second is cattle second uh, second rank in cattle and goats not sheep goats and cattle second category so do you know that india is the largest exporter of buffalo meat buffalo meat we are the largest exporter third category is sheep sheep is the third category fourth category is chicken okay so this is about the livestock some facts i have given for you so then we will talk about the wildlife of india wildlife so you have Um, what does the what is the type? So basic information I am going to tell you. Himalayas. What are the type of wildlife you will find? You will find certain plants. Plants. What they do? Uh, that is rhododd uh, rhododendrons, bamboo, sal, oaks, pine, fir, junipers, lichens, and moss. These are the plants. That is plant diversity you will find in the Himalayan region. That is tropical rainforest in the northeast. you are going to find this then peninsular you are going to find deciduous trees deciduous trees you will find sal teak all those things right so in tropical rainforest of the western ghats you will find some special vegetation called shola forest what is a shola forest how does a shola forest look like shola see when it comes to shola it is just like a grassland on the mountains you imagine kodachadri yaar kodachadri image or you imagine nilgiri i'll go show you how does a shola looks like they are very beautiful to look but unfortunately they are deteriorating because of human intervention see it's a mix of tree and grass so this is a classic image everybody who goes to western ghats they click a picture <laughs> who is this guy shola forest i want to so i think i've shown you that's why it is showing blue color violet color so this is the shola forest which is a mix of trees and grass so nilgiris you will find this right so one speciality of western ghats is uh, western ghats only you will find short trees or tall trees western ghats have the tallest possible trees yaar go and see in western ghats they have the tallest possible trees andaman and nicobar you will find what type of forest tropical rain forest and mangrove forest then you have uh, mangroves where do you find west bengal region and andaman you will find it in gujarat also orissa also orissa what is the mangrove bitarkanika tamil nadu pichavaram hmm okay 
So mangroves, can you name two types of mangroves? Mangrove trees? Huh? I also remember two things because there are many. Rhizopora and Avicenna. Rhizopora and Avicenna, these are the two mangrove species. So this is all about the animal diversity and plant diversity within India. To, next, we will talk about the Scheduled Animals of Wildlife Protection Act. So, is there something which I have to discuss in the images? Okay, invertebrates, see protozoa, I have shown you all the images. So, uh, I don't think it is necessary to show again. Okay. Only, so, invertebrates I have shown you, vertebrates also I have shown you the images, right? Okay, so we will talk about the scheduled animals of India. So you have Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Again, I am going to ask you what happened in 1972. The same question. I am going to keep asking until you tell me. Huh? Word submit on sustainable environment or a sustainable human environment. Stockholm submit. Uh, I am going to tell you the exact name, 1972 Environment Summit. So, it is the United Nations Conference on Human Environment. Very, very important. United Nations Conference on Human Environment, also called as Stockholm Conference. Where is Stockholm? Sweden, yaar. Stockholm is in Sweden. Just because Europe is a small country, you cannot exchange the places. Europeans are very particular on that. Okay. So, yeah. So, scheduled animals. So, now, see, Stockholm conference happens. India, uh, Indira Gandhi, madam, starts, uh, gives the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So, all your national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and your biosphere reserves, so especially the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries, they are demarcated based on the, uh, this thing, what? Uh, based on the uh, Wildlife Protection Act, 1972. So, there is a, uh, in Wildlife Protection Act, there are six lists, totally, it is divided into six lists. So, what are the lists? So, uh, there are six, uh, six schedules, rather you can say there are six schedules. So, schedule one and uh, so th the protection varies from schedule one to schedule six. So, schedule one anima animals are very highly protected, right? So, you cannot kill them, you cannot trade them, you cannot transport them. All your tiger, lion, everything comes under the schedule one animals of the Wildlife Protection Act. So, Schedule 1 animals under Wildlife Protection Act and Part 2 of Schedule 2. Part 2 of Schedule 2 and the entire part of Schedule 1, they have absolute protection. Andre, no poaching, no hunting, no trading, all those things. If you do all those mistakes, you will face highest penalty, you will be put in jail, right? So, uh, I think black buck was a, wait, I will check you, check black buck, black buck in Wildlife Protection Act. So, I think it is a Schedule 1. Yes, it is Schedule 1. That's why Salman Khan faced so much harassment. Uh, not harassment, he faced so much uh, penalty from the court because it's a Schedule 1 animal which he had hunted, right? So, black bug case. So, you, they have the highest penalty. So, the uh, what are the animals you have? Black bug, rhino, lion, tiger, Lion tailed macaque, it's a monkey. Lion tailed macaque, great Indian bustard. Where is great Indian bustard? Where do you find it? I've told you other class. Great Indian bustard, please remember it is Rajasthan. 
it is a critically endangered bird right so then you have schedule 2 animals see schedule 2 animals they also have protection but a lesser degree of protection so what are the animals in schedule 2 you have the uh, dole dole anim dole d h o l e king cobra king cobra is a second schedule 2 animal then flying squirrel squirrel which flies so they actually i was also curious how does a squirrel fly but when i watched national geography they show that from one tree to another tree they will just like go gliding there is a difference between flying and gliding gliding and they have some sort of wings uh, they glide so human even humans from mountains they jump they glide using a glider right that is gliding so that falls under the schedule 2 then you have schedule 3 and schedule 4 animals so schedule 3 and 4 they have they are also protected but lower penalty right? you won't be prosecuted strictly so schedule 3 hyenas i hate them after watching lion king movie have you watched lion king movie no you have missed a very big part in your childhood so hyenas Nilgai, Barking Deer, all these are Schedule 3 animals, right? Then Schedule 4, Schedule 4 animals, Vultures, there are many types of Vultures, right? Red headed Vulture, right? Then Egyptian Vulture, all these things. So they are Schedule 4, Mongoose, Mongoose is also a Schedule 4, and which is the enemy of Mongoose? Snake. Right, we have a story, Janapada story in Kannada, right? So, mongoose. Then, schedule 5 animals. So, schedule 5 animals are vermins. What do you mean by vermin? And you can kill them. Can kill, nobody will ask it. What are the schedule 5 animals? There are only 4 animals which you are allowed to kill. One is mice. Second is rat. Third is crow. Fourth is flying fox. Flying falls. These four things you can kill as you wish. Right? But don't go and kill. Six schedule animals are. They are not animals. Six schedule it is plants. So these plants. The cultivation of these plants is banned. You cannot cultivate these plants. So what are the these plants? They are red vanda, blue vanda and picture plant. Red vanda, blue vanda, picture plant. I am going to show you the images. Right? So, this is, these are the, this is about the wildlife protection app, the six schedules. So, today one special thing what I am doing is, I am going to tell you all the critically endangered and endangered animals. If you wish, you can make it a note of it because I have condensed it from big source. So, these examiners, they are go, not going to ask you near threatened, vulnerable, all those species. But critically endangered, endangered animals and plants, they are definitely going to ask you. So, according to Wildlife Protection Act 1972, um, I am going to I have mixed everything. Uh, so, first is endangered, endangered. So, you are brown antlered deer, brown antlered deer. So, you will, uh, it is an endangered animal, endangered animal. It is an endangered animal. You will find it in Northeast India. Northeast India. So, uh, the, uh, you will find it in the grassland habitat. In the grassland habitat. Next, you have critically, uh, next one is brown bear. So, all critically endangered, I am going to show you the images, not the endangered ones. Critically endangered brown bear. So, this is a critically endangered animal. So, you will find it in the Himalayan region. Himalayas and the, they live in the rainforest. It is critically endangered. Means what? Less than 50 living species. I told you the criteria. Then, Chinese pangolin. Chinese pangolin is an endangered animal. Endangered animal. So, that also you will find in the Himalayas. So, they say that this... SARS or MERS virus. I think even COVID they say it is from pangolin. Pangolin animal, right? So COVID. So, so next is fishing cat. Fishing cat is an endangered animal. Just put E. 
in the bracket so fishing cat that also will find in the himalayas and northeast so where do you find this fishing cat in the wetlands in the wetlands oxbow lakes and mangrove ecosystem you are going to find it next is ganges river dolphin this is very important so it is not critically endangered it is just endangered it is a endangered fish endangered animal you will find it in the indus and ganges rivers next you have golden langur golden langur it is a endangered animal you will find it in the northeast india northeast india moist evergreen forest right then you have speed air h i s p i d h a r e it is a endangered animal endangered animal you are going to find it in the grasslands grasslands right then you have hullock gibbon h o o l o c k hullock gibbon it is a endangered animal you will find it in the northeast india in the forests in the forest region northeast india then you have red panda red panda you will find it is a endangered animal you will find it in the temperate forest temperate forest red panda right so next is lion tailed macaque lion tailed macaque so it is a monkey right so it is endangered you will find it in the western ghats western ghats region evergreen forest right so then red slender lorry this is you know you need not write this because it is in sri lanka so it is not in india that is also endangered so uh, now most important malabar civet the punugu example i gave it is critically endangered so i am going to show you the image so i why i am showing image so there might be a season, uh, time where we will see it only in the images right Criti they might get extinct we don't know because humans are explore oh, one second what is the what did i say malabar civet malabar civet see upsc is also interested in malabar civet it's a cat yaar it's a different yes this is the malabar civet see somebody has killed it huh yeah they are in the zoo so critically endangered uh, thing you will find it in the western ghats only nowhere else so write down it is found only in the western ghats next you have himalayan musk deer himalayan musk deer it is endangered it is endangered you will find it in the alpine environment next you have nilgiri thar nilgiri thar it is a type of uh, deer different type of deer uh, looks like a deer so it is endangered you will find it in the western ghats next critically endangered pygmy hawk pygmy hawk you will find it in the north bengal region pygmy hawk <laughs> pygmy human it so these are pygmies in uh, south africa they are not critically endangered it is pygmy hawk which is critically endangered right so pygmy hawk in north bengal region in the grassland see this is a pygmy hawk sorry where is this pygmy hawk yaar or did i search One second. Researching wallpaper. Ah, this is a pygmy hawk. Looks like a pig only. Proper. So this is critically endangered. Doesn't look nice also, lady. Die. Who cares? okay so it is bad for the biodiversity if it dies so you will find it in the grasslands then you have snow leopard snow leopard is endangered 
it is endangered you will find it in the himalayas alpine region then you have one animal called chiru chiru is also endangered you will find in the same mountain area that is cold region then you have tiger indian tiger it is critically endangered or endangered just endangered it is endangered uh, you will find it in the asian region indian buffalo that is also endangered indian buffalo is endangered you will find it in the deciduous forest deciduous forest ha huh, now a uh, one animal called terrapin it is critically endangered terrapin very important critically endangered are very very important so terrapin is it is a terrestrial animal so this is a terrapin right so it is critically endangered looks nice also so it is the it is not a turtle turtle is one which is in water fresh water or salt water it is a tortoise right so it is terrestrial then one more critically endangered gharial what is gharial i told you the other day how does it look like ah gharial is a crocodile but a sharp snout they have very sharp snout ah see this is a gharial so this is a gharial so gharials are critically endangered you will find it in the chambal and sun river only in the fresh water only in the fresh water thing you are going to find this then you have green turtle green turtle is endangered just endangered it's a migratory turtle then uh, three critically endangered animals i'm going to tell you oxbill turtle back to back i'll show you their images oxbill turtle ox oxbill turtle it is a critically endangered it is a migratory turtle it migrates so that is found in a tropical region tropical region so this is a oxbill turtle looks nice also then bengal florican it is critically endangered a uh, trained uh? okay so that is why it is critically endangered bengal florican you will find it in the grasslands so it's a bird bengal florican it is critically endangered right so they have a proper uh, headgear also right bengal florican then you have a forest owlet forest owlet is also critically endangered forest owlet critically endangered so that you will find it in the dry deciduous area dry deciduous area that is endemic so this is critically endangered endemic so next is last endangered species hog deer hog deer you will find it in the grassland that is the last endangered species i'm going to talk you so talk to you so some endangered critically endangered plant uh, animals birds i'm going to tell you you should note it down you should note it down so uh, these are very important so critically endangered jenkins andaman spiny shrew jenkins see critically endangered they will ask you jenkins andaman spiny shrew it is critically endangered it is found in the andaman region so see this is see it's a rat here yeah. jenkins so the name so the name seemed as if it's a big animal it says rat jenkins andaman spiny shrew this is critically endangered then kondana rat andhra pradesh i think kondana kondana rat is also endangered species elvira rat so this is also endangered species sorry critically endangered that is why i am making you to write it kondana rat is critically endangered elvira rat where is elvira rat the okay elvira rat is also critically endangered 
then namdapa flying squirrel see this is a, a elvira rat this is a elvira rat which is critically endangered then you have namdapa flying squirrel yeah so this is of a flying squirrel looks that is also critically endangered namdapa flying squirrel see see this is how it flies it glides it doesn't fly it glides yes like bats so namdapa flying squirrel then you have sumatran rhino sumatran rhino so sumatra very sumatra that is also critically endangered sumatran rhino see see they don't have the sharp snout indian rhinos has see our rhinos have proper uh, this thing ah uh, see see they don't have that uh, what is it called horn horn so then you have very important hangul kashmiri stag hangul it is a state animal of jammu and kashmir kashmiri stag kashmiri stag kashmir stag also called as hangul it is critically endangered hanguls so see they are like deer they are critically endangered it is a state animal of the jammu and kashmir right so then marine mammals marine mammals which are uh, critically endangered uh, you have the dolphins so dolphins gangetic water dolphin is it critically endangered or endangered i am going to just check it gangetic dolphin iucn status so they are just endangered they are just endangered gangetic dolphin just endangered uh, indus dolphin i am going to just check it uh, they are also endangered just endangered right so that is one thing then dugong 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 is very important that is critically endangered it's a marine animal dugong dugong you will find it in the andaman region i am going to show you do it's like sea horse it's a sea it's a sea cow sea cow dugong dugong so dugong dugong is also uh, see this is dugong dugong right it is critically endangered andaman region many times in upsc they have asked this question then manatees manatees are also uh, marine animals which are critically endangered you don't write down it's a loss for you they are just similar to dugong and dugong right they are also critically endangered then some five animals five animals though being mammals they lay the eggs what are the five mammals which lay eggs mammals give birth to live ones right so some five of them lay eggs which are the five of them what are the five things which lay eggs so first is your uh, egg laying mammals you also called monotremes so monotremes what are monotremes andre egg laying mammals egg laying mammals are called monotremes you will find it in the australia new guinea region all five of them you will find in the australia new guinea region so the first one is duck billed platypus duck billed platypus you will find in the tasmanian region where is tasmania below australia i are a small island below south east australia tasmania just like india sri lanka australia has tasmania right there you will find this uh, monotremes i mean duck billed platypus it's a egg laying mammal right then you have echidna echidna so echidna ali that is also egg laying mammal the egg will be there in the pouch it has a pouch that in which egg will be there then you have marsupials marsupials they are also pouched mammals marsupials are pouched mam mammals so uh, echidna duck billed platypus echidna i'll show you quickly i'll show you duck billed echidna has four types duck billed platypus is one type right 
totally five. So this is a echidna. Sorry, duck-billed platypus. Right? It is a uh, egg-laying mammal. Then you have what did I say? Echidna. So they have pou they are pouched animals. Pouched animals. So this is a echidna. It is uh, yeah, it is like porcup porcupine. Then you have marsupials. Marsupials are pouched animals. One second. Marsupials are pouched animals. Echidna are like porcupine. You have four types of them, right? So marsupials. So echidna lo the egg is in the pouch. Marsupials are pouched animals. They have a proper pouch. See kangaroo, koalas. They have a pouch here, right? So they have. Uh, see, they are placental mammals. The placenta. What is placenta? See, when the kid is born, the curled belly and the light is connected to the mother. That is the placenta. They cut it after the kid is born, right? They are placental mammals, right? So they are nourished in the uterus, and within the mother's womb, it is nourished by the placenta, and uh, that is why mother's blood supply, right? So these are the. Mm, these are what these are what the marsupials right so this is all about the yeah, marine mammals next we will look at certain critically endangered birds critically endangered birds so the first bird is uh, jordan's courser jordan courser is the first critically endangered bird you should note down the critically endangered animals or else it is your loss. Jordan's courser. So you will find it in the Andhra region. In the Andhra region you will find it. So in the Andhra you have Lanka Maleshwara Wildlife Sanctuary. There you will find this Jordan's courser which is critically endangered. Right? Then forest owlet. Forest owlet did I show you? I showed it right earlier. So that is also critically endangered in the Madhya Pradesh Maharashtra region in the deciduous forest of Madhya Pradesh Maharashtra region then you have white bellied heron white bellied where is white bellied you google is least bothered about critically endangered birds so so you will find white bellied heron in the uh, Assam, Andhra Pradesh region in the river sand. This is a white belly. See, they have a white belly here. Right? This is critically endangered. Then you have Bengal florican. Bengal florican, I already showed you. That is a critically endangered bird. Then you just note down the names and buy art so that you know which are the critically endangered birds. Himalayan quail. Himalayan quail is a critically endangered bird. So, you will find it in the grasslands and shrubs. Grasslands and shrubs. So, this is the uh, Himalayan quail. See, it has a proper feather over it. So, it looks like our sparrow. But it has a crown. Proper crown it has. Himalayan quail. Then, pink-headed duck. Pink-headed duck is the next critically endangered bird. Pink-headed duck. So, that uh, uh, you will find in the wetlands. In the wetland region, you are going to find the pink-headed duck. Then you have, so sh this is a pink-headed. See, they, has a, they have a proper pink head. That's why they have become critically endangered. Because humans will kill the nice-looking animals. Sociable lapwig. Sociable lapwig. Yeah, as if the skin is... Remove sociable lap wig. Yeah, so this is a sociable lap wig. Then you have spoon billed sandpiper that is also critically endangered. Last bird spoon billed sandpiper. Then Siberian crane. You know, Siberian crane. So this is a spoon billed sandpiper this is also critically endangered bird last one is siberian crane so you will find siberian crane in the calodio national park where is calodio national park 
Rajasthan. So then you have corals, some type of corals. One type of coral is critically endangered. You know, right? Corals are also living things. So they have a symbiotic relationship with zooplanktons, right? Fire corals. Fire coral. So this is critically endangered coral. So this is a fire coral. So if you contact this coral, your skin will become like burning sensation, right? So fire corals, uh, they are also critically endangered. They are, they look like jellyfish. Some of them look like jellyfish, it seems. And they, if you touch it, your skin will have a burning sensation. So, so next is uh, about migration, migration of the birds. So, birds migrate from place to place. There are certain birds which migrate from Siberian region, Russia to our uh, uh, India, uh, various places, we have Ranganti to wildlife, uh, this bird sanctuary, then uh, name few of them, Kokre Bildur is there, then near Shumaga, what is that here? Sakre Bailu, Sakre Bailu is there, right? So, there are multiple, uh, even this Chilka Lake, Koleru Lake, everywhere, these birds come. So, there, this migration is regular, Andre, every year they are going to come. And is recurrent. Every year it is going to recur and it is cyclical. It's a cyclical pattern you will observe. Why do they migrate? Why do birds migrate? See, one is reproduce. Second is in search of food. Third is in Siberia during the winter, the climate is very cold. Right? What are the reason? They also want to have fun here. Look at places. So that's why it's not that reason. So, climate so various things with the movement of sun, various reasons are there. Reproduction, food, all those things, right? So you have two types of migration. One is winter migration, another is summer migration. Note down which are the winter birds, two or three I am going to tell you. Winter migration birds are Siberian crane, Siberian crane, flamingo and wood sandpiper. Wood sandpiper, so many are there. These three are important. So, you because you cannot remember everything, if, uh, if this comes, it's good, it's your luck or else gone. Summer birds, Asian coil and cuckoos. Asian coil and cuckoos are summer migratory birds. So, next we will talk about the wildlife diseases in India. Wildlife diseases, some of them. So, what are the wildlife diseases you have? The first one is tuberculosis. Animals also get the tuberculosis. They get it from what is the bacteria of tuberculosis. In animals it is mycobacterium. Mycobacterium, see animal diseases are very very important. Some eight are there, very important. Mycobacterium, which are the animals it affects? It affects deers, cats, all these animals. Next you have anthrax. Anthrax, which animals do, does the anthrax affect? Cow does it affect anthrax? So, anthrax comes from the anthra, bacillus anthrax bacteria, bacillus anthrax. So, which are the animals? Gore, barking deer, all these animals are affected by it. Then you have rabies. So, rabies comes from the rabies virus. It's a virus. So, it affects dogs as you know. Tiger, lion, bear, all these animals, rabies is going to affect. Then you have foot and mouth disease. Even the cows will get this disease, foot and mouth disease. So it is also comes from the FMD virus. Rabies and FMD from virus, not from bacteria. So which are the animals? Nilgai, Sambar, all these animals. Sam, like Sam, Sambar is an animal, not the curry. Then you have rinder pest. One more uh, disease, rinder pest. So it comes from the microbilly virus. Microbilly virus. So which are the animals? Deer, wild pig or the animals. Then you have trypanosomia. Trypanosomia that is also caused from the microbilly virus. 
trypanosomia which are the animals tiger and animals tiger and elephant the last uh, uh, important disease is taxoplasmosis taxoplasmosis so the pathogen is taxoplasma gondii taxo t a x o p s p l a a s m a g o n d i i right it affects the monkey called rhesus macaque r h e s u s m a c a q u e right so these are the wildlife diseases which are very very important eight things i have told you by art it there is no other way then we will talk about the last but one topic species extinction species are getting extincted why there are two reasons for species extinction one is deterministic process second is stochastic process what is deterministic process glaciation deforestation all these things animals are getting glaciation glaciation and accumulation of ice deforestation you know though those things are deterministic nature determines the action glaciation and deforestation right so then stochastic process stochastic process and they are random events they are not deterministic and ide time agutte ant helakagala so what are they weather change weather change okay is a stochastic thing disease decreased food all these things are stochastic processes right so why do animals go extinct and one is some reasons are see when they get concentrated in the same place they go extinct they should be dispersed properly if humans were also were in the same place they may one disease comes everyone will die right then unstable population lack of food all these are the lack of reproduction climate all these are the reasons for extinction there are two types of extinction natural extinction and artificial extinction natural extinction is uh, the reasons are continental drifting natural and plate tectonics then uh, climate change tectonic theory all these are the natural reasons volcanoes all these are the natural reasons artificial extinction you know humans are responsible pollution hunting all those things so humans are directly getting uh, making the animals go extinct or also indirectly right these are the two reasons then uh, the last uh, concept of the day is man animal conflict what do you mean by man animal conflict that is animal is there man is there the humans are expanding their base they are going to various places right so that is why they are taking the animals place that is why they are taking the forest and building houses that is why man animal conflict is there so what are the causes of man animal conflict one is uh, greed of humans then humans going into other uh, forest places building houses right uh, lack of food of animals climate change all these are the causes right climate change you know they come into the uh, cities right impact what does impact even the elephants getting clear, uh, killed on the train railway right and also the tigers and lions getting killed in the roadway or any other animal that is also man animal conflict even if snakes come to your home that is also man animal conflict what is the impact impact in agute killing of animals loss of biodiversity right so death of humans also right so all these are the uh, bad effects of the man animal conflict what should be done strategies so some strategies are night time they are going to ban the travel in the national parks that is one strategy second thing is don't encroach the forest area right or build bridges in the forest area if you want to go right all these are the strategies right our uh, spread awareness among the population so make availability of food for the animals in the forest itself do uh, reduce the climate change increase afforestation all these are the steps towards uh, reducing the man animal conflict right this you know right what is man so if a elephant comes and kills a human in the city that is a man animal conflict as simple as that if a man uh, drives his vehicle on a highway or on an animal that is also man animal conflict. not dogs but the forest animals right so this is all about the man animal conflict tomorrow i am going to talk about the tomorrow i am going to talk about the what talk about the plant diversity of india today i spoke about the animal diversity until then take care uh, please make good use of the classes if you have any doubts please 
ping me on our uh, telegram channel vhs education forum please give feedback because without your feedback we won't be able to improvise our classes right please take good care of your health let us meet in the next class take care jai hind namaste